recap of what we've already done. I've uh, washed these down with dishwashing liquid and hot water. Got them all soaked down, got all the old grime and dirt, got them cleaned up. Then took, stuffed them with bubble wrap so they got good and, you know, got them good and stiff so it was easier to work on and so they would hold their shape. And then thirdly, ended up taking leather dye, rubbing it down completely, doing a hand rub on it, getting it completely re-dyed back black. Uh, it's taken about five days. It took about three days for them to dry after I scrubbed them. And then a good day and a half or so after I put the, uh, the dye on them. So now I think all the, the only thing they're going to need is a quick polish uh, with your basic boot polish, which will uh, give them a little bit of protection uh, against the weather and staining and, and keep them kind of bright and shiny. Uh, but they're not too many, too many steps away from being ready. So stay tuned. We're going to give them a quick polish, and then we'll show you what they look like when they're all done. All right, for those of you out there who have never used boot polish, shoe polish, this is just a generic that I found at the dollar store, which seems to work just as good as any of the others as fast as I go through it. Um, all you really need, you want to keep gloves on because it will stain you and everything around you. Not so bad on the table because you can wipe it up. But you basically need a rag, just something to get you a good amount. Turn this around. You just want to rub it in. And this will help darken any spots that uh, didn't really take a lot of the stain because there could be oil. You know, this uh, was probably on the back of a bike for a while, so good chance to get some oil spilled into it. And those areas won't take won't take stain usually, but sometimes you can get a little extra polish on it. So we're back down here in the dungeon, getting ready to clean a pair of cast iron bookends. I think the best bet on them would be to do a little bit of electrolysis. So let me show you my setup and how I do it, and we'll get it going. Alright, so what I've got here is a plastic container. You want to use plastic, you know, you're dealing with electricity, so nothing that'll conduct. Um, a lot of guys say uh, distilled water. I just stick a bucket outside when it's raining to get rainwater. So just so you're not buying, spending a couple dollars on a gallon of distilled water. Um, you want to have your positive lead, which comes down. You can't see because I've used this before. I've got an old saw blade in there, old band saw blade. A couple chunks of iron hanging off of it. This goes all the way around to this side, so you got a good connection. And then what I try to do is everything that I'm cleaning goes in the center of this and it seems to work really well. I freshen up the water so it's important to add some of this laundry booster. I um, can't remember what they call it. Borax is basically what it is. And I just come back and just add a little bit to it uh, because I've added a lot of water to it. Got that in there, you got that. I took my bookends, cleaned them here and here, and then I stuck a little block of wood in between them just to keep them apart so it'll work and it'll have you know have a chance to do its cleaning in between. So what I'll basically do, you want to suspend this, you don't want it sitting on the bottom. So I stuck this clamp on there. Just a couple sticks. My water's not quite enough. 
Like I say, you don't want to go all the way on the bottom. Alright, now that we got both suspended, we got a good place to hook our ground. Your ground clamp always goes to the wire that's going to your piece. Always. If you do it the other way, you'll actually attract rust and stuff to what you're trying to clean. And you'll defeat the purpose. Your charger, you want to use it on the lowest setting, which is 2 amp. Just your basic. If you've got a new automatic type charger, a lot of times it won't work. It'll, sh it'll show it as a fault and it'll kick the charger off. I've got an antique one from the 1960s, so it seems to, it doesn't mind doing this. So it's turned on, got the charger going, and we'll watch it for a few minutes and let you see the action. Alright, so let's get this out of the water here. I didn't have much hope for that. Like I say, that's for some other thought. done a pretty good job. I need to take them over and hit them with a wire brush under some running water. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Let's see. We'll see what they look like. Alright, so we've given this a few minutes to dry. Not much coming off. Come back with a clean rag. I always use the kind of round circular motions in applying it and polishing it back off. It seems to add a better shine to it. Basically that's it. That's... Now you can get crazy. They sell a brush that you can use that you can polish it even more if you wanted a really high luster. But and after this one's been polished with boot polish and this one hasn't so we'll go ahead and get these polished and then when we come back you can see what they turn out like Well, here they are, after running them through a cycle of the uh, electrolysis and then scrubbing them down with just a wire brush and just plain water. Uh, it looks like at one point they have been painted, uh, probably painted to look bronze, but I'm pretty sure they're cast iron. So yeah, they're just cast iron, but they've painted them to be bronze, so what I'm going to have to do is... Uh, in with a stripper and a smaller brush and try to clean those up. But I think uh, by doing a little research, I think that's going to be about the end on these. Uh, I'm not going to put a whole lot of more time into them. 
Uh, they, they're going to get put on the back burner for now. But I just wanted to show you the process of cleaning, getting the rust as you, if you remember before, they were completely rusted and ready for scrap. But now a little cleaning. I just got to decide if I want to paint them or whatever I want to do with them next. Uh, but that'll be that'll be off in the future when it when it gets warm out and I can paint a bunch of other things I have. But I'm glad you stuck around for this segment of the show. Um, if you liked it, please leave a comment below. Hit like and subscribe. So I'm all finished with the polishing on these bags. So now it's time to see uh, see how much of their shape they're going to hold. Like I say, I've got these pretty wet in the cleaning process. And then stuffed them with the bubbles. The bubble wrap. If you're wondering why I use bubble wrap, you use some plastics that don't mold or create a smell. And it's something that uh, won't hold the moisture in there. So let's see how how well they're going to hold their shape. Alright, so not too bad. They seem to be holding their shape pretty good. Uh, to me, I think they're ready. I'll lace them back together. I'll go from here down into our photo booth. Alright, get pictures of them. And they'll go back out on eBay for sale. Get them out there for the spring. So, I'm all in all, I'm pretty happy with them. I'm Jarvis, here with It's Not Junk TV. Hopefully you've taken something away from this. You've got an old set of saddlebags laying around your house that could do, use a little reconditioning. Hopefully you can take some of the tips that I showed you here and get them back up and running. And again, the more we fix, the less we pitch. If you like today's video, please hit like and subscribe.